This is the 10 Minute Teacher Podcast with your host, Vicki Davis. Looking to revolutionize your classroom with exciting, interactive, and free digital lessons? Stay tuned to learn how EverFi can empower you to bring real world skills to your students, even if you're short on time. Take a step into the future of education with EverFi right after today's show. Welcome, Remarkable Educators. Today, we have the pleasure of hosting Victoria Sotero. She is a pioneer in making data analytics very approachable in her BOCES region and is kind of known for, you know, let's make sense of it and let's make it applicable to everyday teachers, which is why we wanted to have her on the show. So she's been using data in creative ways to help teachers and school administrators improve the learning experience for our students. So if you are wondering if data can make your job easier and your classroom more effective, stay tuned to this episode. Thanks for coming on the show, Victoria. Oh, thank you so much for having me. I'm very, very happy to be here today. So Victoria, could you break down for us how data analytics can help a regular teacher in their classroom? And can it actually help us understand students better? Okay, I love that you're asking this and I'm gonna frame it in a very particular way. So data is sometimes something that gets done to a teacher, but I'm gonna invite all educators to step into the driver's seat and don't let data get done to you. So I want you to think critically about the array of data that you have. I work in New York State and we have no shortage of data. It might not be accurate, but there's no shortage of it. And then a lot of it, it's not actionable. So if you're a classroom teacher and you're thinking, how do I make data actionable? Or how do I perform some analysis? What I would urge you to do is to think about demographics, attendance, graduation data, any achievement data that might come out from your classroom as cold data. And then I want you to think about all the stuff that you know how to be either a really good leader or a really great teacher in the classroom. So you know when your little Victoria is in a bad mood. You know when little Victoria's mother, you're not gonna talk to her because she's not approachable right now, right? You know heaps and heaps and heaps of real people data. And I'm gonna call that warm data. So there's a few different ways that we can get into about how to glean that warm data and systematize all the things that you know to make your life easier. I just read in the Washington Post today an article that said 33% of U.S. students have chronic absenteeism which means they missed more than a month. They shared a tiny tidbit of data, I thought, that I emailed our administrators, and it said they have found that half of students who miss two to four days in September will miss more than a month the whole school year, even though we might think, oh, attendance, attendance. Would you call attendance warm data? Is that warm data or is that not warm data? The outcome of it, like the, the number of days that a child misses, that's a cold data piece. But all the many reasons why, and it is very complicated, chronic absenteeism, you know, it goes from everything from like family issues, not having a car, health, wellness, patterns of chronic absenteeism in the classroom, in the district for the family, even something as simple as laundry, right? So in one of the districts that I'm working in, we do a lot for chronic absenteeism. So when you start getting under, you have to listen to the stories of the families to actually get the good warm data to be able to act. Because unless you know that everyone's problem is getting medical care, if that's the issue, you might consider putting a clinic into or get a, a van near your school to remedy the problem. But if that's not your problem, those numbers can't tell you the underlying causes. So to me, it's you need a cold data piece for the number and then the warm is like the underneath the why. Oh, I love that because I actually in there it mentioned laundry that some kids don't go to school if they don't have enough clothes and if their clothes aren't cleaned. And I was like, okay, I can think of students that applies to. Like, I think that is actually an issue. So that's fascinating. You've got the, the cold data, which would be like the days they miss, but then the warm data is like, why is this really happening? Yes. And then you can make clusters of the data within it and really look at it and be like, okay, 10 students are laundry, like, so then what's going to be our expenditure? How can we remedy it for them? Can we work with a local laundromat? Can we bring in a washer dryer at our school? Can we do those kinds of things? Or is it just a matter of like their kindergarten and they have no one to walk them? So can we do a walking bus around, right? So it's like, what are the actions that we can take? You would never know unless you asked, right? 
So, you know, change can really be a challenge. So can you share some of your experience of introducing data analytic in schools and what kind of hurdles do teachers and administrators expect and how can those be managed too? So data work is change work, um, right? It's you're expected to look at something and, and make so a change. So a large pitfall is sometimes teachers don't have the green light to act upon the changes that they wish. So um, can the actors who are in the meeting looking at the data who are passionate because it's about their students, can, are they permitted to make change? So that's like one huge thing that needs to be discussed even before the data meeting, because otherwise we're just admiring a problem. If you're not allowed to act upon or you're suggesting a solution, but then it becomes a little defeatist. So in the people work, we want people to stay energized, happy about what they're thinking about. And another huge pitfall that in the summer months, it's really great for administrators to think about is time. Educators need time to routinely meet to talk about data again and again. Some data are annual, like in our state, we have a yearly exam they take, but in schools, typically you'll have quarterly or per unit. You might even have a daily exit ticket. So it's about those teacher teams coming together and looking not at the autopsy data and things they can't really affect except in large term trends, but what can they actually change for the kids that are in front of them today? So to be able to do that, they need the time to meet and the meetings need to happen on a regular basis, not get pulled, not change. And I know I was building lead. I understand that is way easier said than done, especially with our sub shortage everywhere. Seemingly it's, it's a real challenge, but those would be the two issues. And then beyond that, if I can add, if I, can I add one more in the mix? My last big one that I would add is a really human um, element. We're all just kind of afraid of looking dumb. We are at sometimes our 15 year old selves and we show up that way. Sometimes we get to show up as our beautiful kindergarten selves. And sometimes we show up like in an awkward team moment and a data team meeting, if everyone does not understand the charts that are in front of them, they might not speak up. I think a lot of times people, a system or a scoring profile of a cohort and be like, that's the bell curve. But I think we really need to push ourselves to design to the edges. So let's talk of privacy for just a minute because we've, we've packed a lot in here, but privacy is a concern anytime we talk about data. So how can we use data analytics ethically to protect the privacy of our individual students? In light of data privacy, I would suggest redacting names and dealing with cohorts only and eliminating homerooms. So if you're, I'll use third grade again, you have five homerooms, three homerooms, I would suggest looking at the whole cohort, looking for a larger problem of practice that you're going to be addressing or with a few different teaching strategies to, to remedy what the kids are showing up with that year or in that particular unit. So that would be one way. I mean, another way too is to make sure that free app that's like awesome that you want to use, like, you know, use your basic EdLaw2D uh, compliant, you know, knowledge. You don't put your students' names into apps. And, you know, always check if you have a tech director. We have a whole system in New York State for vetting products that we use inside our classrooms. Okay, so let's finish up. Uh, can you share at least one story of how you helped a school implement data analytics? And you don't have to say the name of the school, but that's led to noticeable improvements. And what are some of the benefits that an average everyday classroom could have as we teachers get better at using data analytics? There was a, a moment in time that I was in a particular school district that had different academic struggles and the proficiency rate in mathematics was about 2%. And in two years time using data analytics routine, and I'll go into a few different of the routines that we use, we ended up at 23% proficiency. So that is a huge gain. And it was just because teachers started noticing the right things. I made sure that there was time for the data teams to meet. And then beyond the time being really precious, what you do within that time is very precious. Data team meetings kind of exist in your district's ecosphere of meeting style. So if you know, meetings are productive, punctual on time in your district, then the data team meetings are. If they're kind of a nebulous and no one really has an agenda and it's a bit more confusing on that end of the spectrum, the data team meetings are going to fall into that too. The beauty is, is that even though that is a problem, because the data team is its own little kind of niche, you, if you're leading it, even if you are a wonderful grade level lead and you are charged with, you know, setting the agenda, 
look to products like I love meeting wise from Harvard School of Education and they really show you how to use every minute because every minute counts especially when you're meeting on preps and so what we did in this school was we carved out the time so the teachers met once every three weeks only for this focus we did a gap analysis the standards that were needing the most improvement through state test scores but also through the tests that they were being given often, maybe like every six weeks, but then the ch children also had a daily exit ticket. So we tagged those with the same standards to match the gap analysis so that they could see how it was growing. And the teachers got together and they were able to come up with very specific teaching strategies that they would try and then come back in three weeks and be like, yeah, it went well. Yeah, it didn't go well. And then as teachers got very comfortable with that, we started building an intervisitation where in between the three weeks, there would be times that they could go see each other, practice, and try this strategy. And the proof was in the pudding. Either the kids were starting to lift their level of achievement or not. And we did that across many different standards, many different strands, but it really did lead to demonstrable gains on the test. We want our kids, you know, good isn't good enough if better is possible. So we want to help our kids uh, do better. Oh, so many things we could go into. Uh, definitely, uh, I've learned a lot, Victoria. Victoria Sotero, thank you for coming on the show. Thank you for talking data analytics. Thank you for helping us understand that this is something that every school and every teacher can apply. There's a lot of data at all of our fingertips. Having these conversations is just so important. Thanks, Victoria. Want to prepare your students for career and life success, but short on time? Busy teachers use EverFi's standards aligned, research-based digital lessons, recently awarded with the ISTE seal for high quality curriculum to teach students to thrive in an ever-changing world. Interactive, game-based lessons designed by experienced educators help you engage students at all grade levels and bring critical real-world skills like financial education, early literacy, character education, health and wellness, and more to your classroom. Thanks to partners, these lessons are free for all K-12 schools and students. With back-to-school season gearing up, now is an exciting time to give your students a jump start on their future. Go to everfi.com forward slash coolcat. That's E-V-E-R-F-I dot com forward slash coolcat to learn more and sign up to get a virtual swag bag full of free goodies to get the school year off right to a great start. So sign up for Everfi today. You've been listening to the 10-Minute Teacher Podcast. If you want more content from Vicki Davis, you can find her on Facebook, x.com, TikTok, Threads, Instagram, Blue Sky, and YouTube at Cool Cat Teacher. Thank you for listening.